Hey, look, you get a color and chat from me this week. <laughs> Happy Sunday. Um, I will be coloring out of Wonders of Nature. I will be coloring this tiger picture, which probably surprises a lot of you. I haven't already colored it. It is a buddy color I'm doing with Wren over at Wren's Coloring Craze. I think is the name of her channel. This was supposed to be in December, but I didn't get my buddy colors done in December, so um doing it now. And um so his uh George this is by George Hufexis. Uh his Wonders of Nature, I feel like this book is one of, definitely one of his more detailed books. Um I apologize. I did not realize, of course, now looking at this um, how bright and washed out the page is. Um, so I do apologize for that. Hopefully you're just looking every now and then at the page while you're working on something else. Um, but I have noticed that this book is really detailed. The couple of pictures I've done, they turn out beautiful, but these like, in the grand scheme of like George Shufex's books, I feel like these are on the end of the more complex, um, take more time pages so um for those of you that are new i typically i try to do one george shufex's page a month um and i use my tau tree markers which work great for those little tiny spaces and they don't bleed as bad as like the big chisel tip type markers the tau trees of course are the slimline markers so they work really well for me uh the color choices work really well versus what um his uh, color palette that he goes with and um so they work really well for me and his books that's typically what i use and uh they do if they're really juicy and brand new they do bleed a little bit but honestly by the time you get done with the picture and you look like you just don't really notice it um at least i don't so um if it drives you crazy that stuff bleeds then with his picture, if you like doing his pictures, you may want to use something more like colored pencil, um, which is what Ren typically does. And um, I did a buddy color with Kim as well, who's one of my mods uh, la last year. And she did hers in colored pencil as well. And I, I love seeing the difference between the marker and the pencil. I always think that's neat how that turns out. So, um, but yeah, it has been a minute. A little more than a minute um, really since I <laughs> I've done some videos this week and definitely has been forever today since I did a coloring chat like was it October maybe September the very last one I believe I did was the hello country fall which I believe was in September it was a Halloween type picture and I think that was the last one so it has been a while and like I said I um, for those of you that haven't been seeing my updates on Instagram or on the community page, um, or haven't checked in in a while, so back in July, the job I had previously, uh, it was a contract job, and they let me know that my, um, contract would not be renewed because, not because of any performance issues, but because they were reorganizing, and they didn't really have a role to put me in and at the time they didn't have a lot of openings for contractors because they still hadn't figured out where they were putting their full-time people in a lot of cases so um i got the heads up from my manager who i had worked with for years i ended up working at that company for almost 10 years and as a contractor and um it was just it was time i needed a kick i needed a kick in the pants and <laughs> i got it and fortunately, um, where my dad works, um, he went ahead, <laughs> I was going to do it, but he, uh, the very first, uh, job he sent me, like it, it was one for a digital marketing manager role and it, um, it was for, um, it pretty much hit all the buttons of what I've been doing the majority of my career, which is digital marketing and um just checked all the marks and all the buttons and would get me back in the digital marketing would get me in a new email um email tool 
and uh, different than the one I've been using for years. And it was just a really good company with benefits and everything. So um, the interview process was very challenging. <laughs> I still say I had to get a certification and I'll talk about that in a minute and I had to get that last Friday I, I passed and got the certification and I've been studying on it for a while and let me tell you I still feel like the interview process was so challenging <laughs> than the certification was <laughs> but this company and I'm not gonna say their name um is uh known for having uh you know they they really are big on hiring the best people they can so they have a very a rigorous interview process and they of course all been through it and I started that job in the middle of September so I am right at about four months in and um, it is going it is going well it is very challenging compared to my previous job a lot because it's just you know, with any new job, you have to learn new processes and they're the, that company and that particular group's way of doing things. And I'm also learning, like I said, a new email send tool, uh, Marketo, I'll say that one um, is actually, I used um, for those of you that have any idea what, e <laughs> what email, market, um, email management and content management tools are out there. I used Marketing Cloud, which used to be Exact Target, that shows my age. I used that for years, which is tied to Salesforce. And uh, so now I am learning Marketo. That's actually, and the reason I feel like I, I'm okay with saying that is that's actually what my certification was in. One of the requirements is that I had to become certified in Marketo, specifically um, the Certified Business Practitioner. There's a couple different ones you can take, but that was the one that I ended up taking. You have to do that within six months of being hired. And um, while it seems a little odd because most people that are getting certified in that have had years of experience in it, I understand why they do it. And um, so I did a lot of, that's pretty much one of the reasons I took a big break is I was doing a lot of um, I was doing a lot of training for this, a lot of studying. Again, I had not used Marketo before, so this was all, I, I'm definitely still learning, which I imagine anybody even using it years in is still learning, and how my company uses it versus how it's used typically out of the box from the, like, certification perspective is also different, so it was a challenge in making sure I understood the differences there. <laughs> And, um, but it is, like I said, there's a number of requirements I have to meet within the first six months. That was the biggie and to me. And, um, I managed that last Friday. I passed that exam. So I got it done a little early. I was very pleased about that. There are other things I need to do, um, alongside that to become, um, I'm trying to think of a way to put this that's not specific to the actual name of it um, to become to receive a special type of status um, for the email team because it's just a requirement and you have to do a number of things like pass the exam and go through different trainings and do different things um, again it's just there's a huge emphasis on quality and um, and in the group I'm in and um, so they like I said they the it's challenging <laughs> and um, my previous job while it was challenging in its own ways it was also something I'd been at for a number of years and was definitely a little more laid back so it has been a bit of an adjustment um, I do have for again, if you're new or you haven't been around very long, um, I do have some chronic illness issues. I have for sure fibromyalgia. Um, I have chronic insomnia issues. I uh, feel like there's other things going on. However, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. I have had some 
issues with getting anybody to listen to me and I've had some issues with some of the medications I take and being able to get them refilled and it's just been um I am fortunate in that um a lot of the issues that I have suspected POTS um which is a uh, post-orthostatic tachycardia syndrome I think something like that anyway um I for sure have uh, unspecified tachycardia, but I'm pretty sure I check all the boxes for that, but nobody, again, nobody is listening to me, but that's what I suspect. Um, but I am fortunate in that um, I started developing all these symptoms. There was a whole ordeal back in 2014 where I got bit by an outdoor cat, wasn't sure of his vaccination status. So to be cautionary, I got um, rabies vaccinations Um, that kind of messed with my immune system. And weirdly enough, I picked up mono still to this day, have no idea how I did that. But that seems to be a common theme with me. I pick up illnesses. My immune system's not very good, I guess. I pick up weird illnesses and I can't ever seem to figure out how I get them. And um, actually my husband got it too <laughs> during that time, even though his immune system's usually very good. And um, I think the mono just kind of triggered everything. They're learning a lot about post-viral illness these days. The, the the research into post-viral illnesses is skyrocketing these days, which because of COVID, um, because of long COVID and it's, it's long overdue, (laughs) long overdue. (laughs) Um, and, uh, I'm so glad that they're looking more into this. Um, but like I said, this should have been done years ago. But um, there's even some connections, and I'm going to see if I can find the papers I've seen, see if I can find the actual technical documentation. There's actually some link between the activated Epstein-Barr virus, which is what what mono is, um, is the elevated Epstein-Barr uh, values, and uh, a link between that, unfortunately, and MS. Um, basically, post-viral illnesses popping up as a result of viruses in your body like Epstein-Barr, um, like the COVID virus. That is one of the reasons I am still very cautious when I go out. I still mask. Um, I have a, when I go on trips, I have a portable air filter that I bring with me. I have a device that measures the CO2 level in the room just to show like what the ventilation level is. Um, We don't dine out in restaurants very often. I think the only time I've eaten out really in a restaurant was the week I was in Seattle. And then prior to that, I think it was the very first year we went back to too many games in October. so like we rarely eat sorry for the pause here i don't know what's going on um we we don't we just don't go out and eat out in restaurants um and like i said i usually um that week in seattle really was the exception to and i should have been more cautious at the time but cases were low and and everything turned out fine like i came back and i was fine but like if i had to travel right now and that was uh, travel for work. Typically, I would be traveling once a quarter. However, we are um, doing some frugality measures at work. And um, for right now, we're doing virtual meetings. Uh, we were supposed to meet in San Diego in December, but instead it went virtual. We were supposed to go to LA in February. Again, it's going to be virtual. Not sure, maybe in March I might be going somewhere, but again, it really just depends on whether the uh, company decides that we can travel again. But I'll I'll be honest, as much as I, I really enjoyed my week in Seattle, by the way, like I do love to travel. It was beautiful weather. It was really nice to just eat out and have drinks and just socialize like to just feel like, I mean, even that's not normal for me, even pre
pre-COVID because I work from home. I usually don't, you know, meet with coworkers very much. And it was a whole week of socializing with my coworkers. And while I enjoyed it, it was also just physically exhausting because of the travel hour difference and just not being used to doing that much. Um, I, I'm not a social butterfly. <laughs> But I really enjoyed it, and I was looking forward to doing more of it, but I have to say that I'm not... What is going on here? Okay, hold on a second. Let me see. I'm going to get back to... There, I'm getting back to the picture. Um, but um, now I lost my train of thought. While I was looking forward to the trips, when I noticed, I ended up getting bronchitis in November, was it? October or November, I ended up getting bronchitis. Again, no idea where I got it. And it got so bad, I couldn't talk. Um, I had to actually use some uh, some of my precious uh, PTO time to take time off from work. Um, I was feeling so bad, I had to go to the doctor and actually get antibiotics. It was it was real bad and I hadn't gotten sick like that since probably right when COVID started being a thing. So, um, all these measures have worked out really well in that I haven't gotten sick very much. So, um, but I have to say when like my whole team seemed to get sick at the same time, like we all had something different, like bronchitis and various things. And like, so it probably honestly has been for the best that, we haven't traveled because it's just been everywhere, like flu and COVID and bronchitis and and colds and everything's like been floating around, especially in November and December. Um, I'll be curious to see how the rest of this month goes once we get back into like people get back into school, people get back in the work from the holidays. Um, I wouldn't be super opposed to not traveling until um you know <laughs> if if it's march or april or may and maybe like you know the the height of sickness season goes down a little bit i probably would feel a little more comfortable traveling um but i do all this because i already have post viral illnesses i already have issues with chronic health the last thing I need is long COVID if I don't already have some part of that um I had a suspected COVID case like really early on in 2020 um but I never tested positive for it but it was very early on I think it was like actually in April and you know they hadn't really done they just barely had started testing and stuff like that and so um because right after that was when I started having heart palpitations and the tachycardia and all that um it just came out of nowhere all of a sudden so to this day I think I've still had it at least once um I also have elevated liver numbers which is really weird because in some ways I'm taking less medicine than I have in the past few years and like I've even started taking milk thistle and nothing seems to be affecting it and I also know that like in long COVID sometimes your it can affect your organs so who knows who knows I actually go back to my regular doctor probably later this month and we're going to talk about it um there's no other medicine I could really cut back on at this point I have pretty much sheared it down to the bare minimum <laughs> Speaking of that, though, part of my problem um, over the past three or four months has been um, I take a medication called Civella. It is marketed as a not an SNRI. I think that's what it's called. It's in the same category as I think. Is it Celexa or Celebrex? I always get those two confused. I think it's Celexa and Effexor are in the same category class. I've tried both and they're disastrous results. So far, Savella really has been the only one that I can take and, and works well for me. Um, it's supposed to be an antidepressant, but I don't know if that's really what it's being used for. It's helping more with the fibro symptoms 
And uh, the problem is there's no generic. It's crazy expensive. I've been on it a number of years. Um, and I knew when I switched to insurance, because my new company has great insurance, I was looking forward to that, but I was also dreading it because I knew I was going to have to switch companies. And even though it's a good insurance company, all insurance companies these days, if it's an expensive medication, seem to automatically deny. And they're like, you have to get a pre-authorization first. And I knew that was coming. My old insurance did it. I knew my new insurance was going to do it. And the problem was, is I was running out of refills. Sorry for all the dinging in the background. Um, I was running out of refills and I switched doctors. I mentioned this, the, yeah. I mentioned this last, I think, in the middle of the summer. My insurance from my husband, we were using my husband's insurance before my new job. My husband's insurance no longer was being uh, taken at the one rheumatologist in my county, uh, one office. And so I wanted, I kind of wanted somebody to give me a second opinion anyway, because I honestly hate that rheumatologist. They wouldn't listen to me. Um, they just, as soon as they saw, they saw the fibro diagnosis, they just assumed everything's tied to that and they like refused to really do anything else for me. I cannot tell you how long I was on to them about, um, the heart palpitations and it took having my regular doctor refer me to a cardiologist before I got anybody to listen to me. And then, yeah, anyway, it's always been a thing. They're not they're not worth a flip and they're the only ones in the county i wanted a second opinion anyway so i went to make an appointment in nashville um, with someone and he had been you know established had really good reviews and but they were like it's a six month wait and i was like okay fine you know let me get six months worth of med from my doctor and then when i switched insurance right in the middle that screwed that up because they wouldn't refill then they wouldn't just transfer the refills. They wanted me to come in the office. And, and maybe that's a requirement. I don't know. But it was just, it was stupid. It was just, even if it's a requirement, it's stupid. <laughs> I was just, ooh. This is one of the reasons I don't want to talk about all this. Because I was going to get mad all over again. So I waited and waited. And it was like December 14th. And I waited so long. And then in November, I couldn't get, I, I started rationing down my Savella because I knew I was going to run out before I saw the new doctor. And then I knew it was going to be a pre-authorization and I knew it was going to take another week or two to get it. So I had to go off my Savella basically for three or four weeks. And I was only at a, I was at a half dose for probably about a month. And um, I was struggling on top of you know new job everything else going on that was one of the things the holidays were tough for me because i was just feeling so lousy because i it and even now i'm only on half the dose i was before and that's because of my new rheumatologist that was so disappointing y'all i i thought i thought you know hey maybe i can get somebody and i i did i wrote out a very brief history I try not to make it pages and pages you know I try to create like a one sheeter one sheet of page one pager as they call it not sheeter sheeter sounds even worse <laughs> like YouTube's gonna flag that as profanity probably um but one pager of like all my medications um what I've been diagnosed with the past medications I took and the reason I went off of them because of course developed like gastroparesis and other things and and um and that's the thing i just wanted somebody to look and like okay so i got diagnosed with fibro back in like 2016 or something ever since then like just the last two or three years i've developed gastroparesis i've developed tachycardia i've developed like all these other issues and i just kind of want somebody like a rheumatologist to sit there and look at these new issues i'm having and be like okay could there be something that this is developing into that isn't just her fibro because fibro does not cause gastroparesis does not cause tachycardia um, at least as far as i know it doesn't and um, both of those 
the doctors were like, well, I don't know why you have this. So anyway, went in there with high hopes because I took a day off from work. It's in Nashville. It took two hours. I had to be there at 8.30, so I was in rush hour traffic in the morning. Two hours. It used to take maybe an hour and 15 minutes from my house to get... I drove back and forth to Nashville for four and a half years when I first started doing digital marketing. And it took maybe an hour and 15 minutes. Um, and I worked nine to six, so I was always off rush hour. Well, that has changed. When you go through rush hour traffic right now, it took two hours. I couldn't believe how long it took. Um, so quickly, by the way, as an aside, on the Tiger, I did switch to a pit pen, which is a India ink pen for the black stripes. And the reason I did that is because this type of pen doesn't bleed. And I wanted those stripes to be really sharp. Um, I did a Tiger in another George Fexis book and I tried to use like just the black alcohol marker and he ended up looking kind of smudgy. Um, so I figured out if I do this with the stripes, I get really nice sharp lines and it, it just looks a lot nicer when, when he's done. So that is the one exception to the Tau Tree markers. If you want really nice sharp black lines that don't bleed, um, I'd suggest using like a pit pen or a Posca paint pen or something, um, with a really nice, uh, precise tip, fine tip to them. So anyway, yeah, I had to take the whole day off to go see this guy. So of course I had high hopes and they were crushed. Um, this man in some ways is worse than the one in Hendersonville, um, he seemed offended that when I told him why, one of the reasons I was coming was to get a second opinion. He seemed very offended that I would dare say that someone in his profession doesn't take their patients seriously. And um, so he seemed offended, first off, that I would dare question one of his fellow rheumatologists. Um, so that was, that was not a good sign right from the get-go. Um, he, what was it? He was saying something like, when I was saying they weren't testing for certain things, he said, well, a rheumatologist is going to test for anything different than a regular doctor does, which is BS. I know this. Um, because then at the end, he proceeded to say he wanted to test me for certain inflammation markers. And I'm sure when he tested me, he only tested me for the most common versions of um there's like different types of um tests you can run there's different types of like um I know like Lyme disease you got about a 50 50 I've had numerous doctors say I should be tested for Lyme disease but Lyme disease testing only gives you about a 50 50 shot they're gonna grab it um, and usually they only test like there's there's uncommon versions of it, I think, and they only test for the most common and just blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so again, I, I could already tell this was going sideways. Um, he wouldn't listen. He basically was like, well, it does sound like you have fibro and... I'm not going to do, he, I walked away with, you have fibro and I'm going to run some vague tests, but other than that, I'm not going to do anything different. And when I tried to advocate for myself, because that's one thing I'm a big, put, big believer in is trying to advocate for myself because when it comes to women's health, um, and I see it all the time on social media, women automatically get, and, and, and men in some cases, automatically get dismissed if they're overweight, if they've already been diagnosed with something like fibro or something, they just pretty much get dismissed. Even when they're like, hey, let me know if anything changes, and you let them know, and they're like, okay, well, we're still not going to do anything different. Um... But it's like once they just don't want to do, they don't want to do anything extra. Like they, the one, the only reason I even have, again, I'm lucky in that my 
conditions are manageable and that I'm able to work. I'm, I'm very fortunate in that regard because, and I'm always well aware of the fact that these conditions could get worse and could get to the point where I can, and it's one of the reasons working, you know, remotely, and that was a big draw of the role I'm currently in. It's one of the big things about being able to work remotely is if I need to, if I'm having a bad pain day and I need to work from the couch, I still can. Um, that I don't have to, it, it's just, I, I don't know if I could just go into an office environment, um, every single day, like the way things are right now. So I'm very blessed and I'm very fortunate. I know not everybody can do that. Um, and, and in some cases I kind of have to, right? Like a lot of us do that where we probably shouldn't <laughs> do as much as we're doing, but you, you have to, right? I mean, you have kids, you have family, you have work, you have obligations, and sometimes you just have to bear through it and get things done. And um, that's what um, I've been doing. And I remember when I first started getting sick, like I felt okay the first few months after I had mono, but starting in January 2015, I started having pain in, and inflammation in my joints and stuff. Um, I kept, over the years, I've been, I'll get continuously diagnosed with costeochondritis, which is inflammation of the rib cage. I get that, that happens a lot. I've wound up in the ER over that thinking it's a heart attack. Um, and I, and just f huge amounts of fatigue, um, some depression, but like, it's a, I had issues with depression before I developed all that. So I'm not sure if it just made it worse or, you know, what happened. Anyway, um, I had my regular doctor give up on me. I gave up on doctors. Um, it took a couple years and then there was a nurse practitioner in at my local um, health clinic that actually sat and listened to me and he's a younger guy he had been doing a lot of re you know was willing to do a lot of research and um, he wanted me to try like gabapentin um, and he wanted to try some other things actually came up with a treatment plan and like I'm forever grateful to this to him his name first name was Josh so um, but I'm forever grateful to Josh for just listening to me and taking me seriously and saying we're going to look into this and we're going to see what we can do like instead of just dismissing me as saying oh you have he's like yeah you do have the classic symptoms of fibro but you know things are changing all the time he's like let's see if we can figure out something different um, than what you're doing right now because obviously that can help you manage it now I know it's not going to be cured I know it can't you know at this point there's no cure for it and the best I'm going to get is managing my symptoms but like I desperately wish he was still there um, he ended up leaving there was um, he didn't want to renew his contract with them for reasons um, and I, I miss him so very much because I feel like if I went to him and I'm like, look, you know, all this new stuff has popped up. He would together in, in, in communicating with me, not just going off on his own tangents. Um, you know, he would really take me seriously and, and I miss him and it's a shame how difficult it was to find someone to do that and um, my current um, so he was my general practitioner doc for until he left and the one I have now she's really good in all honesty I'm probably going to talk to her when I have to see her again later this month because I feel like she takes me more seriously than the rest of them do at this point but the guy the rheumatologist in Nashville was just dismissive um, when I tried explaining why and what I, I just wanted to, you know, I feel like there's something different going on and I feel like nobody wants to look too deep into it. They just want to say, okay, you have these things, deal with it instead of saying maybe there's a connection here. 
And that's where I was saying, like, a lot of the stuff, like gastroparesis and, and the tachycardia, all kind of tie together in POTS. But, again, I can't get anybody. I'd have to, and it would require another specialist. I'd have to go to a neurologist, really, to, I guess, get somebody to fully listen to me. And I don't really want to have to go to another specialist, because I've seen enough specialists at this point. But, I guess, if that's what I'm going to have to do. But, the best part about the doctor in Nashville, the rheumatologist, was um, his ability to talk about himself and the way he does things. And let me tell you, I couldn't get a word in for nothing. He, this man talked for a solid 10 minutes. The irony of this, y'all, just, just listen to what I'm telling you. This man lectured me for 10 minutes straight on how important it is and how he listens to his patients and how important it is to listen to your patients all while the while I'm trying to get a word in and I'm like raising my hand towards the end of the conversation because I'm just like dude can you shut up for five seconds and it was 10 minutes I mean I looked at my watch it was it was ridiculous this man was more about letting himself talk than anything else and I was so mad I was just, and I kept trying. I kept trying, y'all. And uh, so at the end, I walked out. We did blood work. I've already looked at my blood work. Other than my liver values, I don't see anything that is probably go going to look any different than previous blood work. So I just don't think. Oh, and when he said, okay, yeah, let's keep you on the Savella, then he's like, well, we're just going to, I want to start people out on the half dose. So I'm really only taking half a dose of what I normally take, which is what I was doing back in November when I was weaning down, knowing I was going to have to go off of it. So, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, on this tiger real quick, I don't think the brown was supposed to go down that far on him. It looks like he's got like a really big mustache going right there. <laughs> like a little bit of a, a beard. Um, but I was pretty okay with it. At that point, I was like, it's fine. I'll leave it alone. Um, he looks, he looks handsome. He looks handsome with his little mustache. So, um, but anyway, by by then, I was ready to get out. I was like, man, you just caused me to take a day off work. And I spent two hours sitting in traffic to get here to listen to this. And I was so mad. I was just so mad. I was like, just... Healthcare is in dire straits these days. I know people want to pretend everything's fine and okay right now. And... Everybody wants to stick their head in the sand and pretend we're back in 2019 again. And I hate to break it to y'all, but we're not. And one of the biggest indications of that, because everybody wants to ignore, COVID's still here. We're still in a pandemic. I don't give a rat's ass what the government's telling you. Um, all you have to do is go into a lot, many of these emergency rooms or doctor's offices. Try going and getting a specialist appointment right now. That six month wait is not unusual for a new patient right now. And in fact, some others are having to wait even longer. When I got that appointment with my cardiologist, I was supposed to go back and see them in like September or October for a checkup. And they called and they're like, well, we can't, um, he's out that week, so we're gonna have to reschedule you. Do you know when they rescheduled me for? June. June of 2023, like almost a year later, because they didn't have an opening till then. And it's not just, it's not just my doctors, like everybody, go have to get a specialist appointment right now, or, or go see a doctor. Go in an emergency room and see how long. I mean, I had a friend um, who had a stroke last fall, and when they went in, it took him, he was at our local hospital, and then he tried to go to Vanderbilt and was basically out in the hallway for two days until he could get in a room. And when they went in, finally, to clear out, he had 24 blockages, y'all. 24. This man's probably in his 40s or 50s. He's not that old. So, first off, you're like, why does he have all these, you know, 
again, post-viral illnesses, it's a thing. And I know people want to pretend that none of this is happening, but it's happening. And, you know, I just, I can't abide by it. I'm not going to sit there and just pretend. I want to. I, that week in Seattle, like, I really should have been masking the whole time, and I shouldn't have been eating in restaurants and stuff, and, and like, and it felt really good. I see why people want to pretend it's not a thing, because it did. It felt really nice for once to just not have to worry about it, but I, I love my job. I enjoy working <laughs> And I want to be able to continue work and I cannot afford to have any other issues come up than what I'm currently dealing with. And I can't afford for these issues to get worse. So anyway, it was a disastrous visit. Um, basically, the only thing he has going for him, because with my new insurance, technically I could transfer back to my old doctor. It's very confusing, I know. Um, but the one thing he has going for him is he does virtual appointments. And as long as I don't, I'm supposed to see him in February. As long as he doesn't want me to get blood work again in February, I can do a virtual appointment with him. Which, that's what the one thing he's got going for him right now. Um, because my one in, um, uh, in the county won't. So, <laughs> but... But, so, he he put in the prescriptions, and I needed a pre-authorization for the Savella. So, but, it went through really quickly. I'll say that for his office, too. They process that lightning fast. Like, compared to my other one, might have taken a week or two. And that's what I was preparing for. But they went through that lightning fast. I don't know if it was a combination of the new insurance. It's Blue Cross Blue Shield. Um, because it used to be United Healthcare. I don't know if it's a combination of the insurance and the doctor's office, but um, I actually didn't have to wait that long. <laughs> so I've been on a half dose, and I went to go refill it. Well, I have to refill it online, and they used to use one online pharmacy, but they switched it at the start of the year. I got an email that it got switched, but they just said your prescription transferred over. Didn't say anything about I need to go ahead and log in and get my get things uh, confirmed so they can be ready to send my prescription. Oh no, couldn't be bothered to tell me that. I hate online pharmacies. Um, went to refill it today, which I was supposed to. Went online to the new company, had to fill out all this information. They said it's going to take like three weeks. So guess who's going to have to ration back off her medicine again? <laughs> it, it's not, never a dull moment. Never a dull moment. Um, and it's frustrating because, you know, here I am. I've got a new job I'm trying to keep up with because, you know, and, and I need, I need like everything to be hopping, right? I need to get good quality sleep. I need to eat as well as I can within, because with gastroparesis, you have to be, you can't just like, you can't just eat like raw fruits and vegetables very much because it, anything that slows down your system just makes it worse. So like, honestly, the more processed food is the gentler it is on my stomach and the fewer issues I have in regards to that so like eat as well as I can get as good quality sleep as I can rest when I need to which I'm usually stronger at the start of the week because I've had all weekend to rest and that's what I had to do a lot um, and that's why I kind of had to sacrifice my coloring videos and stuff for a while because I only had so much energy for work and being on the computer all day and and doing training and doing my learning and stuff I just in my off hours I was worn out I just didn't have the mental capacity to do anything especially be on the computer after work hours and so rest was vital and so I had to make that decision and things are a little better right now because I have my med and um over the holidays I did get a uh, you know I some things are getting added to my list but some things have dropped off my list at work and um it's getting a bit more balanced and um I am also trying to be more productive 
this year. Um, so, uh, but that's what, I mean, like I said, I spent so much time sleeping and just on TikTok because some days I'd be in such a bad mood. The only thing that would make me laugh would be funny videos on TikTok. And like some days that was just all I could do. And uh, that was a lot, you know, that was me starting out a lot. This year I'm trying to push myself a little bit and take care of myself a little bit better. Um, at that time, that was the best way I could take care of myself. Now I feel like I can do a little more. So that's good. That's good news, right? Um, <laughs> but like I said, now that I'm going to have to wait off depending on how long it takes them to refill this med I'm hoping after and after this next refill I go see him next month I was really thinking I could just stick with the half dose like I feel like I was just it's been manageable really I don't feel like I need the full dose which is great um but I also realized when I had to go off of it completely I really do need at least a half dose <laughs> so it's just it's been chaotic um just in terms of my health being just and dealing with a lot of fatigue um and just big new transition in my life to a new type of work environment and trying to be able to balance that and and be, be my best at work and really just resting up until I got used to it is just going to take a while and so um I feel like I'm in a little better place right now I um wanted to start actually planning this year scary I really kind of want to do a video about it, but honestly, I might wait till closer to February because right now, you know, I, I bought the planners in November. My plan was, plan to plan, was to get all the goal setting and all that done in December like you're, like they, they recommend you do, most people do, and my December was just exhausting. I just did, and, and honestly, I just flat out didn't want to do it, and I was like, you know, it's okay to just start after the beginning of the year and just, you know, start setting routines, getting used to it. Um, bought a bunch of stickers. I'm not using the stickers that much. Um, I've set up a couple trackers. I did buy myself a new tablet, a bigger tablet than what I use when I read at night in bed um, to try digital bullet journaling on. That's had mixed results. I haven't really enjoyed that as much. I think what I probably will do next year, because I've already bought physical planners this year, unless something major happens and I just decide I don't want to fool with them anymore, I think next year I'll probably do the opposite where I use a paper bullet journal and then use the digital planner instead. I think that'll actually work a lot better um, next year, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, I, um, if you're curious about the planners I got, I did get the Erin Condren, um, I think they're daily planners. I have two of them and they're each her six months. And I did that just because I have so many meetings and items throughout the day. I really need the daily, uh, view instead of just the weekly view. And, uh, cause I was going to get Moxie Life and, um, I can't remember why, cause I think they have a daily. I don't know why I decided against it, but what I did instead was got the Moxie Life quarterly, just the goal planning system. And so I'm using their goal system, goal planning, and then I'm using the Erin Condren like daily planner stuff. And, um, and then for the bullet journal, I I think I downloaded something from Etsy and I'm trying to use it to create trackers and lists and it's going okay. I'm just not super comfortable using it. And the app, it's an Android, it's a Samsung tablet. Um, I'm not, a, <laughs> I'm the very avid <laughs> Android user. No, no Mac products, no Apple products in this house. Um, but uh, the Android, like 
the systems I've found so far are really clunky. If any of you have a uh, Android digital planner or digital bullet journal and you use your tablet for stuff like that, please let me know in the comments if you have any recommendations because I could really use them. What I've got right now is working, sort of. Like I said, this month is about establishing routines. I just figured rather than try to make it super complicated to begin with in terms of coloring goals and work goals and all this other stuff, I just hit a few, set a few vague goals for the month to just kind of jumpstart some routines. Um, like I really want to get more involved with the house this year in terms of organizing, um, being able to do maintenance tasks. Um, my husband has had to take on a lot of the house maintenance and chores, just um, particularly when I started started uh, this job, just because again, very low energy. I had low energy issues before that too. So um, I've been wanting to get more I hate that he has to take on so much, so, um, which he has never <laughs> seemed to have an issue with it, and he's always been super supportive, but I feel guilty, so, um, I want to be more involved, plus I would really like to declutter some of our stuff. I have, like, almost 20 years worth of stuff in this house, and have basically filled it up, and I feel like whether I stay here long term and do a lot of work or we just stay for another two or three years and maybe move closer to my parents. It's kind of something I would love to do, but the housing market's going to have to go get a lot better than it is right now. Um, regardless, we really need to pare down how much we have. Um, so that's one of the big things he's, he's done a lot of work with like just cleaning and basic organizing. And so I want to be able to go through and do a lot of decluttering this year and do some organizing of some things like our digital photos or recipes, things like that. So, um, so yeah, I, like I said, I think February, I will take a shot at creating a more cohesive monthly look and so then that might be the point I do the video to show you guys like what I've been doing what I'm going to do and then also talk about like in terms of coloring and hopefully because that'll be a couple weeks away I'll have a really good idea what my February is going to be like and we'll see we'll see how I can keep these routines because one of the things that I worry about is um there's always going to be fluctuations um, in terms of life. Life's always going to be super busy at times and not so busy at others. And so I want to build routines and build consistency, but I also don't want to set myself up for failure and say I'm going to do all these things when I know it's going to be a really heavy month, like work-wise or something, and um, I'm going to need to take a step back from some of the other stuff. So. Um, cause that's what happened last year is I just had to make a choice those last few months. Um, and I mean, I really wasn't doing anything. I was crocheting some woobles, maybe like a, a couple days a week, but like really most of the time I was just, I was spending too much time on my phone. I was on Twitter too much and just basically watching, slowly watching the downfall of our society. <laughs> the U.S. as we know it and um I I'm still on Twitter some I still check it once a day basically for like big news but really for the most part I have gotten away from what you call doom scrolling I just can't handle it anymore um I do this is this is just an all over the place video I do not like the direction our country's heading toward um I feel like we are going to be sent back. We're going to be back in the dark ages for too long um, if this keeps up. And again, I feel like there are major issues happening, like um, the, the cost of groceries. And I feel like that's corporate greed and the housing market. The fact that um, investment companies are buying up all the houses and renting those out. I feel like my brother's generation's probably going to be the last generation and even even not a, my generation might be the last one to 
own a house for the majority of their adult lives. I'll be quite honest. Like I see that as, you know, I see investment companies buying up all the houses and making people pay rent. And rent is astronomical right now. I live in a small town and the apartments that my friend used to live in like 10 years ago, when she was there, I think she said it was 600 a month for a two bedroom, two bath um, apartment, which around here was about right. It was a small town. And um, then I saw somebody post that they needed somebody to take over their lease last week. $980 and that doesn't even color cover utilities and let me tell y'all there were like 40 comments in that and 39 of them were people that were tagged or saying I'm interested because not only is rent astronomical and it of course may situation may vary in your area but I feel like this is happening in most areas not only is rent astronomical you can't find anywhere to rent um and if that, especially in areas like this, um, and um, like interest rates are so high right now, most pe and housing prices are so high right now, most people can't afford to buy a house. It's it's nuts. It's nuts. And like all this is being ignored. Like I feel like just no, we're gonna argue about drag queens and. Um, whether or not, apparently, uh, in one state, they're arguing whether or not women should be able to wear sleeveless uh, shirts into the, I guess, sleeveless clothes in the state legislature. I mean, seriously, what what universe are we living in? I mean, I'm sure all this gives you a, a decent idea of where my personal politics lie. But I just, we are focusing on the wrong things. And it just... I'm just so angry about it and it's just and it's not that I feel like it's not that I feel like people care about these things that I don't feel like or should be priority I don't I don't feel like that's the issue I feel like people just don't care and they're just not paying attention I feel like people just want to ignore everything that's going on they're like I got mine I'm fine who cares about everybody else and just goes on and the moment that a minor inconvenience comes up people seem to lose their minds the um we had a real back hold snap here and right at around christmas where we were in single digits for days that was when that whole huge like there was negative 40 wind chills in the midwest and like it was just insane busting pipes and stuff everywhere it was like single digits down here wind chills up towards negative 10 degrees and stuff and uh i had posted some pictures i think on instagram that week because i started opening my front porch at night because the cats don't go out there to keep food and to provide some warm shelters for the the straight the not my cats that I take care of and not because I was really worried about them and whether they would survive and uh, they refused to use the houses but they did well one of them come in and taco come in and consistently eat so um, and then I saw Wesley as well on our new ring camera so um, they survived it and we managed to not have a pipe bust however <laughs> if you did see my post the day before Christmas Eve like our dishwasher went out the heating element just cracked in two and it's such a garbage dishwasher we just don't even want to bother fixing it we're like we're just going to get a new one because let me tell you <laughs> did not know this but you know when you have a cracked heating element it's highly dangerous highly dangerous and uh our dishwasher didn't want to start and i'd like to think there was a safety feature built in saying something wrong with the heating element so i'm not going to start however that dishwasher was so bad I don't know if that was the real reason it didn't want to start. I thought it was because the water in the line was frozen. But in retrospect, it still was a good thing it didn't go. <laughs> it still was a good thing. And um, that it didn't want to start. So we did order a new dishwasher, but they can't install it until the 18th. And so my, my husband, who apparently... <laughs> used to hand wash dish dishes with his parents as a child as does not remember any of that and hadn't 
no idea how you normally hand wash dishes, um, which I thought was adorable. And um, so we went through the first batch together. And he's every time I try to go in there and do them, he's he's doing them. So, um, but I would like dry them and stuff. And so it's we've managed. It's just you're yeah you're talking to some millennial kids here. Like <laughs> we grew up with dishwashers. I guess he had some hand washing experience as a kid, but like I I grew up with dishwashers. Uh, the only I really had to hand wash dishes in college because we didn't have dishwashers in our. I don't know what college dorms are like today. For the simple fact that you have to pay as much as you do for college these days, those dorms should be like first rate apartments and townhomes. To be honest, I couldn't imagine paying. I thought it was crazy expensive to pay. I think it was like seven hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars a month to live on campus or something. It was it was nuts, and I thought it was too much back then because like nothing was upgraded. It was all still from like the seventies. You had communal bathrooms on the floor. You had a roommate. Um, you had like two communal bathrooms on each floor. You had two communal kitchens. No dishwasher. Barely had a garbage compactor. And so when we had an oven, thank goodness. So when I finally started, my mother wouldn't let, my mother's a great cook, but she doesn't like letting anybody in her kitchen. So I actually had to teach myself to cook in college. And um, that's where I got all my experience hand washing dishes because you just didn't have dishwashers in college back then. I hope they do now because for, again, for what they pay and something tells me they don't, sadly, something tells me they did a lot of upgrades, but I just don't think, yeah, don't get, again, speaking of things being too expensive, you don't get me started on college costs right now. Um, but anyway, uh, so our new dishwasher will be here on the 18th, and I'm excited. Excited about a dishwasher. Um, but on that same day, so like our, our washer, hot and water pipes, Y'all are getting a super long color and chat today. I'm sure you saw the time. So I just got a lot to keep to update y'all on. So, um, you know, listen to a little bit, listen to all of it, come back and listen to some later. It's however I put it out there. Y'all can listen to as little or as much of this as you want. But um, we have to, our washer has, uh, you know, hot and cold water pipes behind it. And because it's a house that was built in 1926, it doesn't have very good insulation in that wall. And I had it bust on me one year. It was always around Christmas. And uh, one of my dad's friends that was a plumber was able to come out and fix, stop the leak. I had to turn the water off to the house because it was just gushing. Honestly, I wish there was a way to turn off the water to those lines like at the bottom of the pipes um like as they're feeding up into the wall but um anyway so he put some insulation around them because they just didn't have any insulation and then my husband moved in and like two or three winters ago one of them busted again i think it was uh, it, both times has been the cold water pipe and our neighbor across the street fortunately because we had to get the, we got we had to get the city to help us shut off the water that day because it always happens when it's really icy outside and we can't get to our water meter to shut it off so we had to actually get the city to help us like chip through the ice to actually get it um that year and my neighbor who is a overall handyman type um who's not over there anymore for other reasons <laughs> offered to um he, he does a lot of plumbing work, offered to come over and do that. And uh, so he fixed that up for us. He added a different type of more, uh, a better type of insulation around the pipes. And, um, but ever since then, I've been nervous. Um, Cause they both, that one popped during the day, but the one years ago popped at like 1230 at night. And, um, I'm always worried I'm going to wake up to a flooded house and like the cats are, when it gets down to like single digits and the cats are all going to be on little boxes and things like as, as life rafts. And, um, so, um, when we had that big cold snap, I'm like, let's, last year we tried this too, because we'll have 
probably half dozen times during the winter where it gets down below 20 degrees and that's usually the time I have to worry about the pipes freezing and just those pipes we don't really have problems and now that I've said that I better find, <laughs> you know do that whole knock on wood superstitious thing um, we haven't really had any issues with our other pipes we always keep everything dripping but of course you can't keep your washer dripping and so thus thus the problem and um, so last year we tried putting a space heater on it and that seemed to work so we did that again this year and did, ran it for like four or five days and um, it uh, never busted um, however that same day the dishwasher <laughs> messed up because we were in there doing the dishes and I was I was putting them in the sink when we ran a load of clothes just to run some water through the line and all of a sudden water started spraying from the back of the washing machine it seemed like and I go back there like oh and I'm yelling for my husband like you know pipe busted no it was the drainage pipe it had frozen down in the drainage pipe and I guess where it froze underneath the wall the space heater wasn't reaching that point so the water that was draining out of the washer is what was spraying out because it had nowhere to go so all we had, you know, we paused the washer. Fortunately, that's all we had to do to stop that for a minute. And I found a fix online that involved, um, like, the old uh, science experiments you used to do in school with, like, baking soda and vinegar or something and uh, to make, like, the little volcanoes. And use those to clear out the ice in the pipe. Actually worked really well and we didn't have a problem. But y'all, it was just a series of events going wrong, like one right after the other. <laughs> that I was just like, if one more thing <laughs> like just that, that thin little straw right there. This is, where's the final straw here? What's gonna go next? Oh, and then the dryer because the clothes were still sopping wet from the washer. The dryer apparently has a sensor. If if the clothes are too heavy, it won't run. So the dryer kept cutting off. And I was worried it was something else. But then once we figured out the wet clothes were too heavy, it was fine. So it wasn't anything else. But we really thought so. Because we had um, power outages happening. So around here, things got pretty crazy. Um... The power went out that so that Thursday night's when it started just dropping snow and ice and sleet and everything and that temperature just went from like 40s and 50s to like 8 degrees in about 5 to 6 hours. It was crazy. I'm surprised things didn't like flash freeze. And they probably did on the roads and stuff to be honest. Um, and uh, uh, what was I going to say? So uh okay that night a lot of power went out for a lot of people around here especially in the more rural areas i'm in a rural town however i'm on the same line as like the police department and i think like our ambulance and our fire department i'm on the same power lines as our emergency services so i guess the county electric co-op has a better they take better care of these lines um, because emergency services are on them. We rarely have power go out. But like my parents where they used to live and, and my friend and like a lot of people like that, they could just, I mean, the wind can blow a little extra hard and their power will go out. Like it's that bad around here. And uh, so a lot of people were without power starting that night, which is of course dangerous in that level of cold weather. Well, our power went out. Our power did fine until about 6 o'clock next morning. However, our unit, even though it's a brand new unit, was still struggling to keep up. And what I've read online, supposedly, heat pumps in, for the south aren't designed for those temps. So, you're not going to get optimal warming. Like, it worked, but it was only like 66 in the house as opposed to 68. We didn't even turn it up to 70 because... <laughs> we would have had it been working okay but um so even that wasn't staying as warm as it should and uh power went out for about 30 minutes came back on it was on for about 30 minutes and it went back off came back on and of course my husband's unplugging like all the computers and stuff because this is not good for appliances and computers and stuff 
And then our co-op announces that TVA has has requ- said that they're going to be over capacity and we've got to start doing rolling blackouts. And um, otherwise, nobody will have power. And of course, these people who've been without power for 12 hours are still waiting for their power to be restored too. It was chaos. Like... I can't tell y'all. I mean, there were people in Nashville that, in in Antioch that day, that lost power and had power off for like 24 hours. Um, I can't imagine like the damage and stuff that was done to pipes, that was done, you know, just people just trying to stay warm. Because I know some of y'all in colder climates are like oh we're always prepared for that kind of stuff but people around here are not prepared for that kind of stuff they're they don't prepare for a couple days being snowed in so they're definitely not prepared for single digit and negative wind chills and possible power outages and things like that and uh so um they said they were going to do rolling blackouts it was going to be like 15 minutes every just depended on which uh, electric company you had like we have a local co-op and um, it was supposed to be like 15 minutes every two or three hours or something like that you'd, you'd lose power for 15 minutes the thing that blew my mind blew my mind that's kind of funny when you think about power blowing out for people when they announced this it wasn't the people that were without power completely that bothered me um because i can understand that you know you're like i i don't even have power you know if i'm like somebody's telling me they're doing rolling blackouts for the people that have power and i'm like i haven't had power for 12 hours and i'm freezing you know i get that i get those people and i understand why they're upset because their power hasn't even been restored but the thing that really got my got my gumption got my uh panties in a twist so to speak were the people that just absolutely refuse the like they were going to refuse the blackout like no you are not going to turn my power off for 15 minutes and and they were asking in the comments like just you know if people would turn their thermostat down to like 68 or 6 we always keep ours at 68 anyway because i'm really hot natured if you just turn your thermostat down to 68 or 66 or you know don't run your washer and dryer for a few days you know or do do loads of laundry but do them in the off hours so like i think seven in the morning to seven at night's like peak consumption so if you waited till eight or nine o'clock to do a load of laundry if you could you know do that if you could wait to run your dishwasher at eight or nine o'clock at night do that um if you can and I know there's a lot of people that can't because they're not at home during that time or what have you. Um, but th- if enough people did that, they wouldn't even have to do the rolling blackouts, right? They're only doing the rolling blackouts to keep from losing power entirely to entire sections of the state. So all these people that are without power, it doesn't end up tripling or quadrupling the number of people that just don't have any power. And the absolute just audacity i guess is what i'm trying to say of people that were like how dare you tell me to turn my thermostat down how dare you tell me not to run a load of it i will run my dishwasher my washer my dryer my i will run that all day long if i want to because power is a privilege or power is a right not a privilege that's what i mean there were people in the comments saying that and i just can't y'all I just came with that that's that is a perfect example what i'm talking about we as a human race have gotten to the point where there are way too many of us that cannot handle a minor inconvenience even one that will prevent us from having bigger problems down the line so like i there are people out in this universe that are like i will set my thermostat at 72 because that's just what I'm going to do. And if the power goes out, oh well. Like, like they don't, maybe they don't believe it's going to happen or something. Like, you know, and, and this isn't, this is a situation to not just help others, but to help themselves too and keep themselves from losing power. Like, this is, 
this is like COVID and mask, y'all. I just, I can't, I can't. It, you, if you cannot, it's that I got mine and screw you. I guess I got to watch how much profanity I use. Now I'm starting to get mad and I want to start cussing all over the place. But because of YouTube, I got to be a little careful about that. Um, but everybody is, I got mine, not everybody, not everybody. Okay. But a lot, like the more than half of this country, it feels like is like, I got mine. So screw you. And if you get a break, how dare you get a break when I didn't get a break? And that's just, I feel like that's where we're at as as a society right now and I just I don't know what to do with that I don't know what to do with this seemingly lack of general kindness and consideration for your fellow man for your own <laughs> health and safety in the long term and and eat and love and care for pets and animals like if I could just I, I guess we're talking about everything that really gets my goat today because nothing gets my goat like people adopt wanting refusing anything but a cute little kitten and then when the kitten grows into a full-grown cat and suddenly becomes an inconvenience they dump them and it happens a lot it happens around here I don't want to hear that that doesn't happen because I know it happens because I have had to rehome at least half a dozen cats, not to mention the 17 plus cats that have wound up in my house because they've been, they've been dumped. They've been, <laughs> there were two cats I adopted from the shelter. That was Felix and that was Tiger. And, and that comes from people not wanting to spay and neuter their pets so there's two I, ha I adopt from shelter one was a no-kill shelter the other one was animal control so he would would have been doomed if nobody else had gotten him every other cat i've ever owned has been a stray that has been dumped or a stray that somebody such as a was in comedians and put outside to just fare on their own and i just cannot tell you how angry that makes me i just yeah Okay, so I guess I need to find another subject because I just cannot tell you how much that enrages me. And there were people doing that when it got cold. Like, I just cannot. Like, what is wrong with us? What is wrong with us? We just cannot stand. It, it's all short-term satisfaction. You know, it, heaven help if we have a minor inconvenience in our lives like i've been without a dishwasher we'll have been without a dishwasher for about a month and we've had to hand wash dishes no big deal we've managed i can't tell you i won't you know won't be thrilled to have the dishwasher but i can't i can't fathom how many people if you just told them they couldn't use their dishwasher for a month how many people would just come unglued at the fact that they can't use their dishwasher like i just i don't understand what what has happened to people like when have we when did we lose our empathy for other humans as well as you know pets and animals have we even ever had that really i just i don't know i know i'm getting like <laughs> i'm going on a tangent but like this has just been really bothering me lately and it has not helped my mood and I just I see thankfully the coloring community and the online community I have found in regards to like cats and pets care and stuff those are the people that give me hope like you guys are the people that give me hope because you guys seem to be a similar mindset I guess like you still have empathy for other people you still have empathy <laughs> like you still oh right here so I'm finishing up this picture and what I'm doing is there were some sprays on the waterfall like where the water was spraying white and the marker bled into some of those areas so I'm using the Dr. PH whatever Dr. whatever uh, Dr. Martin's bleed proof white um, to fill in those spots with a little paintbrush just it was a whole lot easier than 
a lot of times with gel pens, especially with a bright blue or red, um, the white gel pen, like the marker will still bleed underneath. This bleed proof white works really well to um, keep things from bleeding underneath. So anyway, on that note, I'm, I'm sorry. I know some of you may disagree with me. I try not to get too controversial in here, but I just can't stay quiet on this stuff anymore. I'm just, we're heading down a dark path and I, <laughs> all I know is dark humor and um, it has been one of the few things to get me through it all. So, <laughs> um, and, and, and yeah, and comedy, it's hard for me to even watch any sort of dramas or anything serious these days. My poor, my dystopian pandemic type books I can't even read those anymore because I used to think people would <laughs> there's this running joke out there um about how I fully believe people would run around now going um oh it's not a real zombie bite you know and they just cover it up and not tell anybody until they became a zombie like I truly believe that would happen now <laughs> <laughs> like these dystopian books are just too optimistic for me like I really don't believe we'd react as well as these books say we will <laughs> they're no longer um they're no longer uh fun to read for me because then I get depressed because I'm like we wouldn't react this well this is crazy um <laughs> so okay um so I'm about to show you guys the finished picture well here it is, and I'm going to keep talking, even though I'm showing you the finished picture, because I didn't quite get through everything yet. I guess we'll make this like a solid hour 30. Um, so, uh, I guess to talk about animals. Um, so, Taco is still outside. Uh, I have said I'd like to try to bring him in. However, um, there are numerous blocks to that, that... I don't want to bring him in unless it's absolutely necessary and I feel really confident that he is going to be able to um, adapt um, because the one thing I will not do is bring him in and then put him back outside um, because I, I just won't do that. Um, so I need to know for sure that he's going to be able to adapt. It doesn't matter how long it takes. You know, I've got a room upstairs he can stay in. If it takes months, so be it. Um, he's not a fully feral cat. He will come up and he'll let me pet him and stuff. Now, if I put food down, he could care less. That's been the biggest thing is he seems to be, he's like Wesley and I can't get a hold of Wesley. That's the biggest thing with Wesley, but Taco just seems to be. I feel like being inside stresses him out. Like, he just isn't... He doesn't seem like an ideal pick for an indoor cat. Um, and I know that's shocking coming from me because I do... It eats me up when they're outside and I can't bring them in. Um, but he is... He got a lot more comfortable when he was able to go back out. Um, he shows up. I have a ring camera where he comes up on the porch each night and eats. And uh, he doesn't stick around. That's the big key. All the previous cats that I've brought in have always been ones that hang around and act like they want to come in. They act like they want to be pet and they want attention and stuff. And he's just not like that. Like he shows up just long enough to eat. He doesn't even explore around the porch. He goes, he's like, I got cat shit to do. And he just goes on his way. I think he is getting a little chonky um, since he's been neutered and he's chipped. So if anything happens um, in terms of animal control or anything, then he will be scanned. And if, if that ever happens and I have to like go pick him up from somewhere or something and he gets scanned, then that will probably be the point where he comes inside because if I put him back outside the same thing's gonna happen right um but wherever he's at I have a feeling he has another family because his fur is silky smooth he does not look like he stays outside even when it's snow and rain and cold he shows up and he looks fluffy he looks like my indoor cats like I think somebody somewhere he's got two families I really do 
Um, and that's one of the reasons, again, I've hesitated. I do not knock on doors in my neighborhood. The last time I tried that, I got yelled at. And the way people are with their guns around here, I'm not knocking on anybody's door. I'm just not going to do it. Um, I will, you know, I, I'll post on Facebook if he belongs to anybody. And I may do that at some point just to have a peace, have peace of mind. But I do really feel like somebody owns him because he just looks too well to care for. Um, so that's another reason. And he is still growly around other cats, even though it's been a couple months since he's been neutered. Usually when they get neutered, they pretty much get pretty okay with other cats, right? Like, um, even, even out and about, um, my other cats have been like that. And he is still pretty growly and doesn't really seem like, he seems like a loner. And because he is an aggressive personality, and we all know Leroy's an aggressive personality, personality, um, I'm worried if I put those two together, they're going to butt heads. And it's going to involve, like, spraying in the house, and it's going to involve drama. And, you know, I, I miss Maggie, and I would never in a million years not wish that he was here. But him and Leroy together were a really big headache because they were that way. They were both very strong personality types. They weren't, they didn't like flat out fight or anything. They got along, but it was always very kind of tense and dramatic. And, and there was some marking and spraying here and there, even though they're neutered. It can still happen, especially if you don't, uh, fix them young and Maggie was fixed as soon as he was old enough but his he was still an a-hole so <laughs> he still did it um and it just with the health issues a lot of the cats have because other than Leroy they're all like older than 14 right now I have five cats that are 14 and 15 and older um Sid and Winry are both like 18 and I just don't want to put the stress of a new younger cat, male cat, um, on them right now because their health is so fragile. Um, speaking of all that, um, we are managing. Everybody's managed. Um, Scamper still struggles. Uh, she's been getting a pain shot once a month. Actually, all probably all the elderly cats are going to be on this pain, pain shot. I got to find the name of it. I'll put it in the description. Um, it is a monthly shot that's supposed to help with things like chronic arthritis, um, chronic pain, and I have noticed a huge difference because right now Sidonia, Scamper, and Bagheera have been on it. I've noticed a huge difference in their day-to-day -day activity levels since they've been getting it. And it's expensive, and it's done by weight, so like Bagheera's is really expensive. But y'all know I don't have any kids, and I treat my cats like my kids, so... They get spoiled. They live, they, they get whatever I can, they get whatever I can do to help them make their lives better. So, and I'm very lucky that I can do that. Um, especially <laughs> thanks to the new job because the, the compensation is also way better than what I previously had. <laughs> um, I can, I can afford to do that and I'm, I'm grateful for that and I want to keep being able to do that. But, um, Scamper, she just, she's not putting on weight. She's still just hovering around seven pounds. Um, the pain shot and the two daily doses of gabapentin seem to be keeping her eating for the most part, though she's been a little struggling a little bit in the past week. She goes back, I think, next week or the next for her next shot. And they'll weigh her, I guess, if she's still losing weight, they might, you know, check maybe they'll finally do an ultrasound i love my vet but like sometimes i feel like they again they said they were going to do an ultrasound on her and stuff months ago to check her stomach and they hadn't done it yet and i just wish they'd go ahead and do it because i feel like she's got something going on that's not you know that might be what's causing her pain other than arthritis but I can't go to these vet appointments because i have to work and my husband's been having to go and i know he doesn't like to he doesn't pressure <laughs> pressure them I sound like I sound terrible I I'm not aggressive when I go I promise I I my vets are under just as much strain as the rest of the healthcare system and I love my vets so it's not that I'm like mean or aggressive or 
um, refuse to take no. I'm not that kind of uh, person, I, I hope. I hope they don't think that of me. But he just... He tends to take, I don't know, I would have already been like, hey, we said we were going to do this. Why haven't we done this yet? Like, I would just be asking a lot more questions, I guess. So, anyway, I don't want to put him through all that. And since it seemed to be working well up to this point, it hasn't been a big deal. So, um, but again, she's been kind of struggling. Sid, in the last few weeks, has had some struggles. I didn't realize she was 18 and that old. But, um, she, uh she started hanging upstairs more was really lethargic and i noticed her appetite went down a little now my three girls are very fragile in terms of weight they're all right around seven seven and a half pounds and it's like a real good illness could pretty much put them in the force fed range and so i have to be very careful with them and uh so with sid she had a cough that didn't seem to go away even though they said she had allergies and I just I was worried it developed into something else so Brent took her earlier this week she had sure enough dropped a pound um they gave her the pain shot too um she is also on antibiotic to try to help with a cough I've barely heard her cough since she's eating a lot better and she seems like she feels a lot better she's actually out and about more in the last few days than I've seen her in weeks so um, it's just hard to tell when cats are sick. They're so good at hiding illness. Um, mine in particular. And then Winery, of course, she's the oldest. She's a little bit older than Sid, but she has kidney disease. So we have to keep an eye on her. She's real finicky about food and just ugh, nothing stresses me out more than a cat that won't eat. I can tell y'all, like, my own personal hell would just be all my cats not eating you know for <laughs> for various reasons just no matter what food i put in front of them they don't eat and just nothing stresses me out or changes my mood faster than one of my cats not eating it's like a huge issue and just because i've seen so many cats decline and pass away and and of course their appetite always goes at, usually almost always goes at the end it's just it's a really really big stressor for me um and uh Bagheera has dropped some weight he's down now to like 17 or 18 pounds he is now the same weight as Leroy which is awesome I was concerned it was because of kidney disease because that's usually why I've had major weight loss like Maggie that's um, been the reason but when they did his senior wellness all his blood works great he does insulin twice a day for diabetes it's like one unit and two units so it's like these sm one of the smallest doses he can get and he has thyroid med he takes twice a day and he's got like a oh what's it called the cosequin he takes twice a day for his arthritis but see he also gets a pain shot major difference in him he has been out and about so much more i could tell just all that i'm so glad he's losing weight it takes a lot of pressure off his um bones and his muscles and stuff so um i'm glad his weight loss has been good weight loss um and leroy is about the same weight now so i have two chonky boys leroy's been doing good and hanging in there he's been one of my ones with the f of course he's my youngest he's only three or four so he's still a lemon cat because he's got that stomitis thing with his teeth and he's got the urinary crystals and stuff so he still has his own issues but he's been hanging in there Reba Chief's been a little stuffed up. I think he's probably got the same thing that Sid has. So we're going to try to take him in here in the next week or so. But my male cats seem to be doing really well um, for the most part. It's the girl cats that are my fragile, dramatic ones. So if you were wondering how the cats are doing, they are all, I mean, they're managing. I, you know, do worry I don't know if Scamper's got like years and years left or anything, but I just, I just wonder about her and just how she, how she is that there might be something bigger going on there. So, you know, she may not have forever. Well, none of them do really. Um, but like she's been spoiled rotten. They have heated pads now. We noticed over, um, <laughs> we noticed over the cold snap that they all like especially the three girls because they're the the frailest 
were living on the vents, like the heated vents. And one day, just because they kept sitting in my husband's lap, he would take one off and another one would get in his lap. They only hardly ever get in my lap because I move around too much. But um, he kept rotating cats on his lap. So I was like, well, let me get my heated uh, pad and put it on the couch and see if they like it. And I put it on its lowest setting. And uh, sure enough, they were drawn to it like flies to honey um, or vinegar or whichever one does more. Um, Scamper and Reef Cheap not would physically fight over it, but like if one, one was always on it. If one other one was off, the other one would immediately jump up there and take the place. So I went and bought pet safe heating beds because you can put them on lower temps. Um, you always do run the risk of, you don't want to turn them on too high a temperature because they can burn an animal. Um, so you generally want to keep them pretty low temp. Their body heat will take care of the rest. They, they love them. Um, when it's hotter days, like when it's in the 50s and 60s, they don't use them as much unless they're turned off. But like today, I've noticed they've really liked them um, because we dip down we've been having snow today we had a cold front come through last night the snow hasn't stuck or anything so it's not it's not a huge concern but um they love those suckers and uh that's probably one of the best investments and I, I kept telling them if they didn't use them i was gonna start sticking them under me on the couch because let me tell you i may be hot natured but this winter i feel like particularly this time of day um where it's late evening or uh, mid afternoon to late evening i get so cold i get hot during the night but i get so cold like in the evenings and mid afternoons and stuff and um i even bought a little space heater for my office because um i just and i have little house shoes i wear all the time now because i just get so cold all the time like in certain times of the day and those pads i'll use them if they don't so anyway all right let me think i think that's going to be about it i mean we've been talking here for the better part of an hour and a half and i know y'all got stuff to do i got stuff to do um i do have a four-day weekend which is awesome i'm hoping to be able to stay the night with my parents and um just have a date night with the husband and just take again it's a little extra time to just kind of relax rebalance before we've got some you know i've got some projects on my plate for next week so i hope you guys have enjoyed this now you're pretty much caught up with me at this point um don't know what i'm doing next for next week um i'd like to do another color picture but uh, like coloring a picture but maybe to music or just talking through the process or something you know not a color and chat i'll have flip throughs of some new books i've ordered and then we'll do another collection video i actually have two of those left because i still have to show you all the new books that i got since november or whatever to complete that and then next weekend i might do a live stream I was saying on the uh, the other day on one of my comments that, you know, I really hate that I'm doing fewer videos, but then I got to kind of thinking maybe if I can do fewer pre-recorded videos, this will open an opportunity for me to do more live streams. So maybe just a casual color and chat live stream once a month um, instead of like the big book giveaways. I mean, I'll still do one every now and then. We still, I'm within yelling distance of 3,000 subscribers, so I would like to do, you know, maybe a giveaway for that or something. We've got my channel anniversary coming up in June. I might combine those, but maybe just do a simple color and chat like on a Saturday night or something. I'd like to try to do that maybe next weekend. So we'll see. If anything, I could pre-record the video, premiere it, and show you guys the coloring, and then we could just all talk during it. We could do that too. So let me know what you think in the comments if you'd like. Let me know what you've been working on. How you doing? Um, always curious to know how people have been hopefully hanging in there. It's not been easy. Um, and honestly, my 2023 has not started out in a super optimal way. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, it's been worse, but it could be better too. So I guess, you know, 
I'm not much of an optimist. I, I don't think I'm a pessimist, but I'm just more of a realist, I guess. So, hope you weren't too offended by my rants. Um, if you were, I'm not going to apologize. You just, it is what it is. And like I said, I'm a realist on the, on the grand scheme of things. I generally try to not talk too much about it. Not necessarily because I don't want to offend people because I don't want to be a downer. Because these are supposed to be more positive videos. But man, sometimes you just got to get it out, right? Like you just stews away in there and you just got to get it out and talk about it. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. So anyway, thanks guys for watching. Hope you liked the picture. Hope you enjoyed the video. And I should be back hopefully either Monday or Tuesday with something. So thanks. Bye for now.